Hey, what's up? I'm Brett with Premier Guitar, hanging in Nashville, NAMM show. I'm with Richard Hoover from Santa Cruz Guitars. Richard, how are you today, sir? Brett, always a treat to see you. A treat this to is, see you, This too. is a good show. Yeah, it's a good show. Uh, let's let's talk about wood today, shall we? My, my pleasure. That's my passion. Uh, the guitar that we were talking about, our 1934D, uh, is not just a copy of a, of a vintage instrument. It really has the things in it that make a vintage instrument sound better than a new one. And those, those things are the age of the wood. We, we start by working with really old wood in this guitar. What's happened in old wood is the sticky tree sap polymerizes or crystallizes and it becomes more resonant. That's really the secret of uh, uh, old instruments in sounding better. Uh, the other one is the stresses built into a guitar in a factory setting create tensions that don't allow the instrument to be truly resonant. By building this carefully, slowly, and making sure things fit, we have an absence of tension so the guitar sounds older when it's brand new. Um, a couple of other things that we've done with this instrument is uh, hide glue rather than a modern glue. It transfers resonance quicker, more efficiently, and gives us the ability to have quick response, nice separation between the notes. And finally, the finish. This isn't a, a, a paint or a, a, a lacquer as such. It's cellulose dissolved in solvent. It's putting a light coat of wood on wood, so we get the the resonance of wood rather than hampering that resonance. So those qualities truly make this um, a, a vintage instrument that was recently assembled. You can't help but notice the back of this guitar. Um, tell me the story here. Sure. This is a classic example of that. This is Ziracote from uh, uh, southern Mexico, Central America, and it was a hurricane blowdown. And it's a close relative of a Brazilian rosewood, and it fits all our criteria. Uh, it's a responsible harvest. We're not cutting a living tree. We're getting, you know, beautiful old wood where the resins have crystallized, and uh, it died of natural causes. And, and uh, when these things come up, People know that Santa Cruz Guitar Company will pay a premium for this kind of wood. So again, we satisfied our criteria of uh, great sound and uh, uh, environmental responsibility when we do it. Neither one of them uh, uh, compromising the other. It looks like we have uh, a mahogany treat in store. Yeah, this thing is a dream come true for me. Uh, I've wanted to build this guitar for 30 years. One of my career goals is to get mahogany the respect that it really deserves. It's an absolutely wonderful tone wood. And in a ma mahogany top, if you go back to the 30s, uh, guitars were made like this that today people are uh, amazed at their sound. Um, as this wood's gone into modern production in factories, it's been dimensioned just like spruce i.e. too thick, too heavy, and it's got the reputation of sounding muted or warm or something like that. Or too dark, right? Yeah, right, exactly. That's not how it truly is. If dimensioned properly according to its density, it's really resonant, really loud, very rich. And this instrument, the idea with this is to do something that was was very simple but very elegant, really eye-catching, and to showcase the mahogany. And uh, uh, we absolutely have a tiger by the tail with this. People need to sit to play it before they appreciate it. Well, this isn't the proper mic setup, but I just wanted to see if we could just get a little example of how this guitar sounds when you're talking about mahogany being treated the right way. Do you hear the separation between the notes? You're talking about the separation between the notes right now, mm -hmm. right? Uh, sustain and complexity of overtones. The stuff that makes a guitar sound great. The OM is a real, uh, you know, classic design. Only problem is I didn't design it. It's been around since the 1930s, and this instrument. Uh, Brazilian rosewood and Adirondack spruce. These are these are kind of the holy grail. The desirability comes a lot from rarity. 
in this. And and you just mentioned Brazilian, so we got to yeah. flip it around. Okay, let's. I want to show you the sides on this. The straight grain, the tightness of the grain means it was a really old tree, and this wood was uh, was cut in the 1930s, and it's what has the advantage of age, the resonance, the tight old growth, and it's really really dear. When you're thinking about a guitar, you're going to build and you can look at the tightness of the grain and say, okay, I kind of have an idea of how that's gonna sound or how that's gonna translate. An idea, that's good, an idea, a clue, but we won't truly be able to evaluate it until we handle it and listen to it. And not in a finished guitar, just by, by tapping and feeling and feeling the density. Because really our, our secret, if anything, is working with wood according to its densities rather than making it a certain dimension a certain flexibility so you can measure two of our guitars that sound identical but the measurements won't match to try to keep the explanation simple if if what we're doing is like you know a, a master violin maker does in voicing and tuning an instrument for consistency it's expensive to do that it's much easier to assemble spar parts um, but when you do that it's like throwing rocks at a piano um, but if you throw enough rocks at a piano, every once in a while you'll get a chord. And this is why you'll find a cheap guitar that sounds good every once in a while. And you play 10 of the same brand of the same model to get the good one. Well, what you pay for in Santa Cruz is we don't throw rocks at the piano. We you're, you're hitting it every time yeah. so that every guitar comes out, has that vintage vibe, that dried wood, the old feel, the resonation, the, you know, just here's, everything that makes it sparkle. Here's a great example and a chance to dispel a myth. In this Adirondack spruce, you see the grain is pretty wide, um, and but it was evaluated for its stiffness, not its look. And uh, this this wood goes way way back also. And why would it be evaluated for its stiffness versus its look? Um, uh, because the the cosmetic or the look um, could belie a crummy sounding piece of wood. Uh, the distance apart of the grains doesn't tell you how stiff it is. Um, if the if the wood was cosmetically perfect but a little too flexible, um, you'd you'd get a woofy, uh, tubby sound out of it. You wouldn't get definition. Uh, conversely, there could be a wide grace of grain piece of wood that's too stiff to sound good. So again, it's more the flex of the wood rather than the look of the wood. We we do pay attention to cosmetic. We found through a careful market study that somewhere around three thousand dollars, people have no sense about knot holes. So, in modern guitar making, uh, to spend three days on the finish is kind of excessive. We spent three weeks on this process, and what we're doing, uh, I, I'd explained previously, is we're we're putting a light coat of wood on wood. This isn't a plastic or a polymer. It's cellulose dissolved in a solvent. And our finished thickness is six thousandths of an inch, about two hairs. So 12 coats, uh, uh, like, a, like a beautiful restorated car finish. Um, it's really thin, uh, really lustrous. But over time, it will telegraph grain and look more like an old violin than uh, a brand new shiny bar top. And one thing you touched on is the cure of the finish, uh, the, the the amount of time it takes to dry, and your your process is a little more old school, correct? Yeah, exactly. As I was saying, uh, uh, most modern finishes in, in guitar production is like furniture, uh, either a catalytic finish like uh, our, our cure, like epoxy, or a ultraviolet cure. And the finishes tend to be thick, they hamper resonance, and most importantly, we're trying to make a guitar that's an heirloom. And in that, it needs to be repairable. If it's not repairable, it's disposable. And uh, this finish can be worked and made as new for repair, whereas the modern finishes, they're like glass, they're beautiful, but if you break them, you're sunk. Okay, Richard, so if people want to find out more about your guitars, where do they find you? I'd like them to go to our website. It tells our whole story. That's SantaCruzGuitar.com. There you have it. I'm Brett. You're watching PremierGuitar.com.